thank you for joining us again. Uh, we're working through the opening verses of, of, of James's letter. And we're actually going to spend our day, our second day, on a particular part of, of James chapter 1, where James brings these amazing, challenging statements of God's wisdom, sayings that really cut into the heart of how we are to live as followers of Jesus. Yesterday, we thought about being quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to be angry, being people in control of our words. But James's wisdom in these, uh, this part of chapter one doesn't stop there. I don't know how many mirrors you have it's your, in your home, in your life. Um, I guess there probably will be at least one mirror in your bathroom, maybe in your hallway, in your bedroom. Um, if you have a handbag, uh, you have one there probably, um, certainly a couple in your car. We all must look at our reflection a number of times a day. Well, in the time that James is writing, most people wouldn't have had daily access to a mirror. But James is using this picture of a mirror to help us think about our response to the word of God. I guess when we look in a mirror, we respond to what we see. We might put a hair back into place if we've got hair. Um, we might use a finger to get some dirt out of the corner of our eye. We might check that our clothing is on right, that the outfit we are wearing matches and is looking good, or shirts tucked in or whatever. We respond, hopefully, to what we see. So if we saw some lunch on our cheek or a dirty smudge, we would go and immediately do something about it, remove that, that, that smudge, that bit of dirt. We wouldn't leave it there, would we? Well, James wants the same for the brothers and sisters. He wants people to respond to what they see and read and hear from God, to respond to God's wisdom, to, uh, as we look at it, as we understand it, for it to make changes in our lives. Well, let's read James chapter 1, verses 19 to 27 again as we read yesterday. James 1, 19 to 27. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry, because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. After looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they've heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Those who consider themselves religious and yet do not keep a tight rein on their tongues deceive themselves and their religion is worthless. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Do we have the word of God planted in us? Well, I guess most of us listening here today have had maybe decades of the word of God being poured into our hearts and our minds. We've all listened to copious amounts of sermons and read books, seen films, spent time in Bible notes. We've had conversations about the word of God. We have so much opportunity these days to read and to study and to hear God's word. And the word of God is as James wants to tell us in these opening chapters, um, is wisdom for our lives. It instructs us, it guides us, it helps us to know how to live in the way that our Creator has designed for us to live. But of course, there are alternative wisdoms out there. A few days ago, we discussed the pressure of our society to think that wealth and fame should be our goal, our purpose. That's a wisdom of the world at this time. And as James, James says, these are short-lived gains. They're wisdoms that are doomed to wither like a flower. They're actually folly. But there are plenty of other perceived wisdoms out there, and James says that they are prevalent in our world. They dominate cultures in any generation, in any age. They pull us away from the true wisdom of God's word. So famously, James says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. We are currently working through the opening chapters of Matthew. 
uh, and we're looking at Matthew's Sermon on the Mount on Sunday mornings. And Jesus is going to end that sermon, that collection of teachings, with the story of the wise and the foolish builder. True wisdom, Jesus will say, is building our lives on his words. When Jesus was speaking to the disciples, the crowds, he didn't want them to just agree with him. He didn't want them to like what he was saying. He didn't want them just to be amazed at his words. He wanted followers who would put those words into action, who would allow his words to transform the way they saw the world, the way they reacted to the world, the way they treated other people, to produce the fruit of the kingdom in their lives and in the world around them. And James has this passion too. Don't just listen to God's wisdom, act on it. Build it into your lives. This is the true wisdom that gives true freedom, lasting freedom. And this is the true wisdom that stops us chasing things that won't bring us satisfaction in life, that will end up just being folly. May God bless us as we seek to live out wise lives. In the name of Jesus. If I ask you to help and you say that you will, but then don't. If you say that you won't, but later decide that you will. When are you wrong?